What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about how to program conditioning for athletes. So I get asked this question all the time, how do I program conditioning? What do I think athletes should be doing for cardio? So we're gonna answer that question for you guys. Um, if you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you subscribe to catch all of them. All right, so when it comes to programming conditioning for athletes, my number one tip is to just really understand the demands of the sport. Every single sport has different demands, different types of running, different types of energy expense involved. So if we look at soccer, volleyball, football, basketball, right, they're all different. And sometimes you can break it down even further into um, positions. If we're doing soccer, for example, I'm probably using soccer a lot since that's my sport, right? Every single position has different energy expenditures. A forward is different from a center mid, which is different from a center back, which is different from a goalkeeper. So if you want to get really specific, which you will later on down the line, you're going to look at that. However, if you're just looking at the sport in general, it's going to be different from volleyball, for example. So when it comes to these different sports, there's a couple things that you're going to want to look at. You know, do you have to have an active recovery? So what I mean, if you look at soccer, once again, right, there's really little to none stoppages. So your recovery is still moving. If you watch soccer games or if you watch anybody just play soccer, right, they're gonna be doing sprints, they're gonna be running, but a lot of the times they're still moving, they're tracking, they're getting in shape, they're just opening up into different angles. So that's more of an active recovery. Or if you look at something like football, for example, right, you might go for like five, 10, whatever long, however many minutes, if you're on like the offense. And then when the defense is in, you know, you're chilling, relaxing for a little bit. So when you're on the field, you might be going, 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 depending on the pace you play at, right? Like if you're a wide receiver, you gotta hit sprint, reset, sprint, reset, but then you get five minutes while your defense is out there, or however long they're on the field. So different things like that, or volleyball, for example, right? You're not really doing any sprints. However, you have to be really adept into doing some quick bouts of movement, jumping, resetting, getting down, up, all those little things. So the demands of the sport are crucial for how you are gonna program your cardio. That being said, um, another really big thing to look at and to do is going to be to build an aerobic base. So this is the part that kind of scares people because you hear build an aerobic base and a lot of people think, oh my God, I don't want to go out and run 10 miles because you know in the past, that's what you had to do. Even when I played soccer, it's like, we got to build that base. We're going to go run laps. You know, nowadays and in my opinion, I don't believe that's the best way to do it. There's a lot of research that shows doing intermittent um, bouts of um, like sprints or, you know, energy expenditures is still a great way to build that aerobic base. You're hitting your sprints, you're doing some active recovery or you're recovering and then you're going again. And that's still a great way to build this base. And we can use the demands of the sport to kind of tailor that approach so it's becoming more sport specific. You're still getting that aerobic base. And um, I do want to say that having that base is extremely important. Just as it is to have a base for strength, you do want that aerobic base because it's amazingly important for recovery. The better your base, the better the ability to regenerate energy, the more you're gonna, the faster you're gonna be able to recover, the better you're gonna be able to produce energy to hit what you need to hit. So I don't really suggest going out and just running like a flat pace for 10 miles, unless you're cross country, unless that's what you gotta do, something like that. But I'm talking for intermittent sports sports where you go high burst of energy and then you kind of chill for a little bit. Um, I don't really recommend going out and just running 10 miles or five miles, two miles, honestly, even one mile. Like, you know, if you want to go out and run a couple miles, I recommend doing something where you kind of change the demand of the run. So you go out, you run like a 10 second sprint and then you do active recovery for 30 seconds. Do that for maybe like five minutes or a mile or go find something with hills in the run. So you have to run up the hill and then you chill for a little bit, do like some active run, something like that. So it's very important to look at the demands of the sport itself and the position you play. If we're going back to that soccer example, um, as we get closer to the season, I will probably be training a center mid for cardio differently than you would be training um, a forward or a goalkeeper, right? Goalkeepers are very similar actually to volleyball players, in my opinion, having to do those quick, um, quick movements, 
be very, very agile, be able to jump, to get down, to recover, and uh, don't be fooled. That takes a lot of conditioning and cardio to be able to make those really quick and precise movements over and over and over. So that's gonna be a little bit different to a center mid who has the sprints in there, who still has you know, the general pace of just tracking. If you guys watch a soccer game, if you watch the center mids, right, they do have a lot of sprint work. They have to track back, they have to sprint up, lateral movement, all that, and there is a decent amount of active running. And when I say active running, it's not just jogging at like 50%, right? A lot of times it's about 80%, getting to that position to cut off the passing lane, tracking a player, doing any little movement that you don't necessarily think of as max effort is still very important to train. So long story short, to wrap things up, when it comes to programming cardio for my athletes, um, I do not like to just go out and have them aimlessly run. There are so many better ways to do it in my opinion. Um, and a lot of those are that intermittent style, whether you're soccer, basketball, football, volleyball, those are all intermittent sports. So I think that your cardio should be as such, training so that your body adapts to those demands because the body is super, super adaptive. Um, you know, it becomes what you train in a sense. So if you train the ability to run sprints, to recover fast, to run another sprint, then when you go to your game, it's going to have that ability. And while the, and, and the research does show that that type of training works to build that aerobic base. So you kind of kill um, two birds with one stone right there. And there are different levels of sprints you can do, right? Not every sprint's gonna be like a 40 yard dash where you sprint and then you kind of chill for a little bit just like a small, not small, but like, you know, just like a straight line. You can do a lot of different things. You can do like some S sprints. Um, you can do like a 300 yard shuttle run, right? Those are freaking horrible, but you sprint to the half and back, like on a soccer field, for example, and then you rest for a little bit. So that's still a max effort, but it's a little bit longer distance than just a, uh, like a 40 yard dash or just a full field sprint. So get creative with it. Hill sprints are amazing as well. Uh, like I said, going on a longer run if you do wish, but changing it up, getting your sprints and getting your hills and something like that, all great ways to do it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was helpful. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one.